Good morning. Good morning to all of you here in the sanctuary and all of you out on Zoom. Going to be there. If you're a visitor, we certainly hope you'll enjoy the service and join us again. By way of introduction, I'm Judy Eastburn, your lay leader. To my right, it's Pastor Rob Dean. We have no committee meeting this Tuesday, yay, but we have Halloween, so we will be doing, we will be doing the trunk or treat with the kids. Um, the November, December newsletter deadline is November 4th. My goal is to have it put together, edited, proofed, and printed, and out in the mail before Thanksgiving. There's a sign up to volunteer for the veterans breakfast by the coffee hour sign. Um, uh, you will most likely be getting your pledge mailing this week. I'm just and letting you, you know that. You. Pledge mm -hmm. card and the um, packet. The pledge packet will be coming out this week. If you do not by any chance receive one and need one, please let me know because I try to keep my list as comprehensive as possible, but I could miss someone or the mail could miss someone. So just let me know. And if you have any questions at all about pledging or anything about MJ, the finances, MJ, please check MJ, with anyone Mary on Mary. the finance committee. They're all listed on the letter that you will receive. Uh, remember that our services are now on YouTube and you can find the link to that on our website or you can go directly to your own YouTube if you're comfortable doing that way and just search for Trumansburg United Methodist Church, it'll come up with our YouTube page. So if you want to go back and look at any services or sometimes I just go back because I might have missed a little part or whatever and it's kind of nice to just see it right there with your headphones on and yeah, whatever. Absolutely. But And I can see mine on my big TV. Oh. <laughs> uh, Please join us after the service for coffee hour. Thank the Pastor Rob and Trudy who um, are providing that for us today. Um, now I'll turn this over to Pastor Rob for other additions and announcements he may have. Well, good morning and welcome to church today. Uh, my name is Pastor Rob Dean. Um, what you don't know is that I'm not going to be here next week. Well, you might know. Um, I do want to say thank you to all you people who have been encouraging me this week, uh, who know of my fear of flying. Uh, as of the beginning of the service next week, I should hopefully be setting down in Nashville. And if you say an extra prayer, maybe we will only bump once or twice as we land. That would be good for my soul. Uh, but I did want to say that next weekend, um, Reverend Jeff Losey, our former minister, will be here presenting the sermon. Um, Judy will be leading us through the parts of the service that revolve around uh, regular worship and also being part of the stewardship campaign and the stories. Um, so I do want to say a special thank you to Judy and to Jeff uh, for that gift, um, as well as all the other folks who will be here. Uh, they will tell you the video before church is already there. Uh, so the preparations for next week have been going on for weeks, uh, and I am so excited uh, for the opportunity to go and i only woke up twice this week panicking about airplanes so your prayers are slowly working thank you for those um, i do want to draw attention to something about today's service um, this is our celebration of all saints uh, in part because it's important as minister for me to be present for these kinds of activities uh, while sometimes even the act of communion i would have happily entrusted to reverend jeff this is something a little more intimate that the person up front is someone you see every week who cares about you uh, who is there in case you want to talk later or even throughout the cold months to come uh, we do have an extra candle up front and that is there for a purpose uh, sometimes we don't remember a name and sometimes a notice doesn't get to the office and sometimes there is someone who nobody knows has passed so the extra candle is for them uh, because whether or not a candle is lit in your memory, God knows who you are, and God holds you close. And so, because we're humans, we light an extra candle, because we know that all the hard work, all the dedication behind this Sunday, sometimes, despite our best efforts, things fall flat. Um, 
in addition to that, if you're online, I apologize. I don't believe you have the last two pages um, that Carol Grove so carefully prepared for us. If you're here in the sanctuary, there's all sorts of information about people who have supported the church in the past, or the names of the folks, uh, people who have a living memory here in the legacies they left to this congregation. That is a wonderful gift. But if you were coming for the first Sunday and you feel like I don't belong because my family member's name isn't there, I'm sure Carol will be the first person to say, you get to be part of the legacy going forward. You get to be part of the church family from this day on. And we are so glad that you are part of our community today. Whether it's the first time or the thousandth time, we want you to know you're welcome. Uh, we know that the faithfulness of people is measured through how they live their lives. And for being a part of our community today, you are welcome and thank you for being a part of worship. Judy? And now, if you'll stand if you're able and join me in the call to worship. With what should I approach the Lord and bow down before God on high? He has told you, human one, what is good and what the Lord requires from you to do justice, embrace faithful love, and walk humbly with your God. Let us worship the Lord while seeking justice with faithful love and humility. Let us worship God with the gratitude shown by the saints that have gone before us. And now our opening hymn is number 140, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Mercy. 
Our invitation to confession this day is, comes from the uh, book of Micah in the Hebrew Scriptures. So let us hear what Micah has to say as we come before the Lord in humility. But in the days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house will be the highest of the mountains. It will be lifted above the hills. Peoples will stream to it. Many nations will go and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of Jacob's God, so that he may teach us his ways, and may, we may walk in God's paths. Instruction will come from Zion, and the Lord's word from Jerusalem. God will judge between the nations, and settle disputes of mighty nations which are far away. They will beat their swords into iron plows, and their spears into pruning tools. Nation will not take up sword against nation. They will no longer learn how to make war. All will sit underneath their own grapevines, under their own fig trees. There will be no one to terrify them, for the mouth of the Lord of heavenly forces has spoken. Each of the peoples walks in the name of their own God. But as for us, we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and always. On that day, says the Lord, I will gather the lame. I will assemble those who are driven away and those whom I have harmed. I will make the lame into survivors. Those who have driven away into a mighty nation, the Lord will rule over them on Mount Zion from now on and forever. Let us pray. Holy God, we are a short-sighted people who will live among short-sighted people in a short-sighted world. We rarely imagine the end of all things in a good way. We see a world that often seems to teeter on the edge of destruction. We look out on a world still rocked by a pandemic that is facing climate woes and warring people. We see the poor struggling while the rich seem to grow ever more prosperous. The sick struggling while the healthy seek ways to live longer. And so many people facing illnesses of body, mind, soul, and spirit. We can confess that we see these things and miss the vision of Micah. When was the last time we actually believed that everything might actually end well? When was the last time we dreamed of a world where all people have their own grapevines or fig trees? When was the last time we dreamed of a world where the saints would walk in peace with all others? When did we last dream of a world where all souls have their space to live and thrive without the threat of not having enough. We confess our lack of imagination. We confess that we have sinned while living in this life and we have clung on to false hopes with a death clerk. We confess that we sometimes do not leave room for you to work in our lives. We confess that we sometimes fear death and lose sight of the hope of resurrection. Forgive us our sins and our short-sightedness. Hear our prayer as we pray together familiar words. Receive us also and raise us up into a new life. Help us so to love and serve you in this world that we may enter into your joy in the world to come. Amen. God of love, we thank you for all with which you have blessed us even to this day, for the gift of joy and days of health and strength, and for gifts of your abiding presence and promise in days of pain and grief. We praise you for home and for friends and for our baptism and place in your church with all who have lived and died. Above all else, we thank you for Jesus, who knew our griefs, who died our death and rose for our sake, and who lives and prays for us. Uh, if you're wondering where that is from, both us, the prayer we prayed and that prayer from the service of life and resurrection. So I invite you to hold those words dear, especially as we go through the service to come. And now Pat will come forward for the gratitude reading. This is from Galatians 5, 22 through 25. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, 
faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against things like this. Those who believe in Christ Jesus have crucified the self with its passion and its desire. If we live by the Spirit, let's follow the Spirit. Well, I was asked to do um, the fruit of the Spirit, to do faithfulness, and I thought, well, that's, I can do that, that's pretty easy. Um, and when I looked at it, I realized that, um, you know, there are things I see every single day or I do every day, like um, showing up for appointments and scheduling tasks, cleaning, feeding the dog, activities like walking, and in relationships, um, making coffee for my husband, sending money to my granddaughter, um, making meals, um, being true to my loved one. And that was different back when I was first dating than it is now that I'm older. Being true to my loved one is much, has a lot more encompassing. We take care of each other. And I have a faithfulness in that. I have a faithfulness in all of these things. So I think I was looking at faithfulness kind of as a verb. I don't know my, I don't remember my grammar well enough. But when I looked in the Bible and I looked into Hebrews, it was described as having the confident assurance that what we hope for is going to happen. And it's the evidence of things unseen, which is even deeper than just the little stuff I do. Um, and the Bible shows through many, many people, examples of faithfulness that I really hadn't, I realized, but I hadn't looked at before. There was Noah who built an ark because he was faithful. He believed God when he told him that there was gonna be a huge flood that was gonna wipe everything out. Abraham, he wandered and, and left his home because God asked him to do that. Sarah and Abraham in their old age believed, although Abraham did have a little bit of doubt, um, believed that they could still have a child when they were old. That's amazing. Moses and his mother had a lot of faithfulness because first of all, his mother took him and put him in the Nile, I think it was the Nile, a river. Who would do that to their newborn? And then Moses, as he grew up, um, he grew up in a palace, but he, because of God's guidance, he gave that up and he went on to lead people across the desert and through the Red Sea. Um, Peter, who's in the New Testament, walked on water. He had faithfulness in what Jesus was telling him. He too had a little bit of doubt, but generally he did that. And then there was Mary, a young, a young woman who had faithfulness. She was a virgin, yet she believed that she was going to birth Jesus, God's son. I mean, those are tremendous examples of faithfulness. Well, I hope I didn't lose three. Um, in my life, I guess I've, I've had faithfulness in a lot of ways. I've been through multiple moves. As I like to tell people, I had 13 different schools I went to because my dad was a pastor. I went to three different colleges. Um, I was in a major car accident. I had two major, I had two marriages. Thank goodness the last one is wonderful, dear. Um, <laughs> I lost my son. Um, you know, I've, I've um, gained and raised a granddaughter, still I'm raising her. Um, I have friends, I have blessings. All of those things are examples of faithfulness in ways that I've been blessed. Um, I'm an optimist. I enjoy and I'm thankful for all I'm blessed with. And even in this morning when I was taking a shower, I thought about faithfulness. I mean, I, I just assumed or was faithful that good hot water was coming out of my, out of my shower. I assumed and was glad for the medicines that I had and the doctors had helped me. Um, and then I thought it's a lot easier to be faithful when you have all these things, when you're a middle class or an upper class person and you take things for granted. How hard it must have been for the people in the Bible and for others today that don't have the things that I have. Faithfulness takes a lot of strength and I think it comes from the grace of God. You know, and thank God for where I am, and I think we all look at ourselves, we can here, and be thankful. But, um, you know, accidents happen, loved ones die, people we love make mistakes and get hurt. Dreams aren't fulfilled the way we think they should be. But by faithfulness with love, I believe that we will work out 
work life out in the manner that God chooses for us. And in, in the hymn that we sang, it's all I have needed has been provided by God, and I thank God for that. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. And now my ushers would come forward. We'll take a time to give back to God some of what he has given to us. doctology. But a short time, we come into this world mysteriously, quick, and we sometimes leave for that distant shore even faster. Although we come and go like the seasons, we thank you for remaining steadfast. We ask you to bless our offerings of talent, treasures, and money as we celebrate the memory of those who have come and go with the knowledge of our own mortality. We ask a special blessing on the most rare gift which we each can offer to you and our community. Bless the time we share with others than you. We ask you to be present in this life and to protect the very core of our being when that time comes, when we each travel to the world to come. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. And now our anthem is All the Way Home, being played by Francine.
beautifully played. Thank you, Francine. Uh, as we gather for the prayers of the people today, uh, we do so remembering uh, that this is a special day for many, where we remember folks who have gone before us. Uh, there are a couple times a year when we kind of have this emphasis. Sometimes uh, our longest night service has a bit of this flavor as well. Uh, but it's a time to remember those who have gone before us. In a moment, we'll have a sermon where we talk about how we are called to be faithful. Uh, but it's important to remember on this day um, those who have gone before us and who have prepared the way for us. Um, as we go forward, we also remember this week that uh, it's a celebration in the world around us. Uh, it is a celebration that is not necessarily Christian, uh, but it is a time of joy and happiness, and it is a time for uh, celebration and a little bit of joy. Um, God has a sense of humor, and I truly believe that this is a great time for children uh, and those who are young at heart to imagine themselves being the things they feel called to be. Who doesn't want to be strong like a superhero? Who doesn't want to be brave like a knight? Who doesn't want to have the poignant grace of an ambassador. I don't know. I'm trying not to stick with gendered norms. Uh, but what a wonderful, wonderful time for people to have imagination. But let us also pray for those who may take it too far. In our scripture reading later, it will talk about people who carry things on a bit too far. So let us pray for people to have joy and celebration, but let us also pray that they do so responsibly. Um, let us pray this week Yes, please pray for, pray for me as I get on a plane, despite my fears. Uh, but let us also remember all those who will be facing things that they are afraid of. Uh, whether that be the spooky things in the night, or just the everyday things that some take for granted and others find terrifying. Uh, let us remember as a people that our church uh, continues to be going towards that general conference. Um, and who knows, it's been seven years since we met. Who knows what will come? So let us pray for that. Um, let us pray for the worldwide church all around the globe. Some places in power, some places in poverty, some places with strength, some places in only God's strength and weak in the eyes of the world. Let us pray that those who have power would use it with justice and those who are in need of justice would find mercy. Let us pray for a world that has peace with justice. Uh, not the special Sunday offering, but for a world in which there are places in war, there are places where serenity is far from anywhere um, and where justice seems like a, a pipe dream. Let us pray for those places and for the family members of those in those places who are trying to find their way sometimes around the globe, uh, away through the feelings. Let us pray for our neighboring church communities, uh, the Presbyterians, the Episcopals, the Friends, the Catholics, uh, the Baptists, and even other Methodists of other variety. Uh, let us pray for the non-denominationals and for those who are living in their own little house church or in their own little faith communities. Uh, let us pray for our witness as believers uh, through our life and character that we would be marked by faithfulness both as a verb and as an adjective. That was a wonderful presentation, by the way. Um, and let us pray for all those people we remember in our hearts and our thoughts. Um, let us pray for Judy and for Sarah for Johnny and for Evelyn, for Jamie and Elaine, for Elizabeth and Marie, for Amy and Beverly, for Leah and Walter, for Laura and Sue, for Mary and Gary, for Joe and for Nathan, for Joey and for Angel, for Marilyn and for Jason, uh, for Jack, and for those with broken hearts, those who face unknown paths and those unspoken requests which are only known, uh, between, only shared between our heart and God. And throughout the season, we have been praying by singing. So let us sing together Kumbaya with the words, Come by here. Come by here, my Lord, come by here. Someone's praying, Lord, come. 
Lord, hear all the prayers of our thoughts and our minds and our words as we pray the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we prepare to pass the peace of Christ, I would remind you that this all points down to grace, which is unmerited favor, both that God gives us and we share with others who may not, de who may not seem like they deserve it from us. So, as we pass the peace, may your epitaph share peace, found living this life well. May God's peace pour out on those you love. In this life, live with grace. Peace be with you. Our next hymn is number 712 in the red hymnal. Uh, I sing a song of the saints of God. I sing a song of the saints of God. And now we'll take a few seconds of silence to open our hearts to God. Our scripture reading is 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. Therefore, since Christ suffered as a human, you should also arm yourselves with his way of thinking. This is because whoever suffers is fin finished with sin. As a result, they don't live the rest of their human lives in ways determined by human desires, but in ways determined by God's will. You have wasted enough time doing what unbelievers desire, living in their unrestrained immortality and lust, and their drunkenness and excessive feasting and wild parties and their forbidden worship of idols. They think it strange that you don't join in these activities with the same flood of unrestrained wickedness. 
though they slander you. They will have to reckon with the one who is ready to judge the living and the dead. Indeed, this is the reason the good news was also preached to the dead. This happened so that although they were judged as humans, according to human standards, they could live by the Spirit according to divine standards. The end of everything has come. Therefore, be self-controlled and clear-headed as you can pray. Above all, show sincere love to each other, because love brings about the forgiveness of many sins. Open your homes to each other without complaining, and serve each other according to the gift each person has received as good managers of God's diverse gifts. Whoever speaks should do so as those who speak God's word. Whoever serves should do so from the strength that God furnishes. Do this so that in everything God may be honored through Jesus Christ. To him be honor and power forever and always. The word of God for the people of God. Ooh, check my light. There's my light. Beautifully well read. And I'm going to come down here not just because I'm afraid of knocking everything over, uh, but because I want, to be, uh, I want to be in your midst uh, as one who speaks the word of God, as Peter spoke of. Um, we are in the midst of a nine-week series. Uh, and one of those weeks, I will admit, will be on YouTube as we do self-control while it's Veterans Day weekend. But we're in the midst of this nine-week series of looking at the fruit of the Spirit. And I want to thank you all for being a part of that. I've even started to see it pouring into committee meetings where people are talking about the fruit of the Spirit at the finance meeting. I was like, that's amazing. We talked about that at finance. But why are we doing this together? Part of it's our stewardship campaign. And part of it is exactly uh, what was so beautifully shared with us today. We are part of a legacy of faithfulness, of people who live their lives, sometimes in the midst of very challenging things. So yes, we get involved with church because people see uh, the fruit of the Spirit in the lives of people who are gathered here. Uh, when, when Pat pointed us back to some of our biblical forebearers who taught us the way through their example in Scripture, that's exactly the sort of thing we see in the examples of lives in this room. As a minister, I get to see some of those stories lived out right in our midst, and I get to see how faithful people are. So yes, we sit there and do this as part of our stewardship campaign, to sit there and say, in this place, these are the stories we share. These are the lives we live. But the other part of it is to remember that we are called to have these things in our lives. Uh, in Galatians 5, right before the fruit of the Spirit, it talks about the work of the flesh. And in our reading from Peter today, it talks about all these people who live their lives excessively in certain ways. Now, do I think if you're going to have a hamburger with a friend, you're not being faithful? No. If you're going to eat a whole cow with another person, that might be a bit excessive. Uh, we're talking very distinct things, but Paul and Peter both point out the fact that there's a way we live when the divine isn't in us. There is this tendency to forget where we came from, to lose our place. Micah, long ago, shared about the fact that we are called to live with justice, with humble love, and with kindness in our lives. These are things that are meant to be shared with others. We are not meant to live just for the sake of ourselves. Paul, Peter, and Micah all call us to think about what it means to live faithfully. What is required of you, mortal? What is naturally in you, and what spiritual gifts does God pour into your life? And dare I say, what does it mean to live a faithful life when you know that even if the world lasts another 10 years, none of us is guaranteed to live that long. Here at the end of all things, which if you live long enough, sooner or later happens to all of us, we make an account for how we live our lives. 
And so Peter points out what it means to live faithfully. Yes, it is to live a life that is faithful, but it's also to live in the midst of everyday life, to live a life where you forgive others, where you share enough love that forgiveness is possible, even in the midst of a multitude of sins, where you choose to live in faithfulness with one another, where you choose to perhaps forgive where you wouldn't forgive, where you choose to put something above just eating and feasting and drinking and partying, but a life where people matter. That's my favorite part about Trunk or Treat, by the way, is seeing all the kids and smiling at them because I know that their lives matter. It is an amazing thing to be part of a community where we believe that. The funny thing is, as a minister, I remember many a life. And some of the names on our, on our list today I performed the service for, and some of them I visited uh, digitally and wrote cards to for years before they passed. And I got to see what came next, which is family members and friends remembering them and remembering what their faithful life looked like. But I often wonder if people actually know. Do you know all the stories? Yes, it's easy to remember that someone lived a faithful life. Did you see them on the ventilator, struggling to be faithful, even as they couldn't breathe? Did you see the child um, as a small person being held by their mother to four in the morning? And at the end of the life, wasn't mother great? Yes, she was. Did any of us see that mother staying awake all night long with a screaming baby? We see the father who does his best, who falls short, but still cares for his children dearly. And we say, what a faithful life. And we forget sometimes how much that faithful life cost. What does Peter tell us? To fill our lives with love, to focus on what matters, because the truth of the matter is, those faithful lives we remember were lives that were lived just like ours, day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute. You are called to be faithful, even as the people before us live faithful lives. You are called to live with forgiveness and grace in your life, even as those who came before us were. Sometimes we admit the people before us weren't perfect, and sometimes when we're really brave, we admit we're not perfect either. But we live with that grace. We don't lose ourselves to the world, but we live as those who live again. So our invitation in the sermon is very short, by the way, if you didn't notice. Our invitation is to consider today what does it mean to be faithful? All these things we've talked about, love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. What do these look like in your life? How are you called to grow these in your life? And then go and live that way so that one day when we light a candle for you, they will see what you're doing today and remember that God's faithfulness was shown in a grandmother who loved her grandchild. His faithfulness is shown in someone who did their best to love someone who didn't always make good choices. And someone who is brave enough to sometimes be faithful even when that meant letting someone else fall down and hit their bottom. Whatever faithfulness looks like today, I pray you find it. And I pray that when your day comes, you are remembered as someone who did their very best to have so much love in their hearts that all of the mistakes are just left as dust in the wind. So we're going to pray, and then we're going to remember people. And there'll be an opportunity to light candles, and we will have that extra candle for the person we didn't remember, and I apologize if that person is someone who matters to you deeply and dearly. But know that this is a moment to remember as best we can with love those who have come before. So God, as we remember faithfulness as a gift, we remember the biblical stories that Pat has pointed us towards. We remember the lives of those we are remembering today and those we have remembered in years past. We remember all the moments in our lives when we are called to be faithful for all the places we weren't and we now recognize we can be faithful for all the places where we did the right thing and it sometimes felt like it was, went unnoticed for the call to live today as people of God. We thank you. So be with our memories. 
be with our lives and help those, those who have gone and those who live today and those who will live to point towards the faithfulness that is found in your divine love. Amen. So we are going to take a moment and remember five names and then our name that is unknown. So I would invite Judy to come forward. I know that the, the picture is below the paragraph. The paragraph comes at the end. Uh, so we're going to begin by remembering these names. And then an opportunity will come for you to come forward and light a candle um, for those you remember. And so perhaps we'll do that first. If you have your two candles over there, Judy, you wish to light them and they're on, they're on the table. Or you could just do it that way, yes. There's more in one way. We'll get there, don't worry. And so we remember um, these names, one of which was only a few days after our last service. Lord, we remember Margaret Peg Slocum. Lord, we remember Sandra Gladstone. Lord, we remember Thomas Tom Gell. Lord, we remember Gary Vincent. Lord, we remember June Ploss. And Lord, in humility, we remember the person whose name we may have lost or whom we do not know. We are going to take a moment um, until my microphone keeps dropping, I apologize. Uh, until we are done, however long that may be, and I know that that's not great for us, people who love to be out in an hour. But we're going to have silence and an opportunity for people to come forward and light a candle in the memory of someone they love. And so the table is open, the candles are ready. Come and remember in your hearts and your minds those you remember this day.
as we prepare to pray, um, a reminder of why we have the gratitude cloths the way we do. Um, we have gratitude in these moments. One, because we hope in resurrection and life. And two, because these lives have been so good and so faithful and so giving to us. We remember those who live without hope who do not have the same hope in the life to come, and we recognize that for some, death is very real and very frightening. And so we have compassion, and we show love, the same love spoken about in Peter. So let us pray, remembering not only those who have gone in ourselves, but those who live in fear, that someday we may come to a day where all live in peace, regardless, um, as Micah would say, uh, regardless of where they come from, that they each would have their own fig tree. Eternal God, we praise you for the great company of all those who have finished their course in faith and now rest from their labor. We praise you for those whom we name in our hearts before you. To all these grant your peace. Let perpetual light shine upon them and help us so to believe for we have not seen that your presence may lead us through our years and bring us at last with you into the joy of your home, not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Uh, we now go to communion, uh, which is always fitting for all saints. Um, and we'll be singing and, along with the faith we sing, and the actual liturgy uh, is for all saints. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks. good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you almighty God creator of heaven and earth God of Abraham and Sarah God of Miriam and Moses God of Joshua and Deborah God of Ruth and David God of the priests and the prophets God of Mary and Joseph God of the apostles and the martyrs God of our mothers and our fathers God of our children to all generation and God to all of the beloved in faith and so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Oh. Son, Jesus Christ, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by the water and spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to the disciples, and said, take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
Likewise, when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to the disciples and said, drink from this all of you in remembrance of me. Uh, there it is. Drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink of this all of you in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your spirit upon us, gathered here, upon the gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body of Christ. Ah, so close. Be a body of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the church until we feast uh, in the heavenly banquet when Christ comes in final victory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Just a reminder that there are little baskets on wooden stands on either side of the sanctuary, so you don't need to worry about what to do with your cup. Also, especially on a day like today, if you wish to come forward and kneel and pray and remember those who've gone before, you're welcome to do so, as long as you need, uh, whether it be five minutes or five hours, uh, we're, not gonna, we're not gonna throw you out of the building. Uh, so please feel free to take that offer if you so desire. But this bread which we break today, it seems so simple, but this gift is a gift given to you by Christ. This is God's table meant for all people in our theology. So whether you are a United Methodist or um, a visiting member of another church or a member of no church at all, we believe that since this is God's table and it's God's invitation, you're welcome to share at this table. You will not be turned away. Likewise, we believe this cup is shared with all. There are little cups, so we don't share the common cup. We're not quite that far out of the pandemic, uh, but we do serve the unfermented fruit of the vine so that all may come and all may feel welcome. As you come forward, please know that God loves you. And please know that um, you are called to live a faithful life and that God absolutely welcomes you to this place. If there is need of forgiveness, if there is need of grace, that is the God we love. So come, taste and see that God is good.
We do thank you for this holy mystery and for all those who have come before us. Uh, we thank you for the gift of music and song that many have sung for years, for a liturgy that has been passed down generation to generation, and for those who will come after us, whom one day may sing different songs and may say different words. We thank you that we are a part of their past, and we are a part of the future of those who came before us. Bless us to be a part of this day and to share with grace all that you have given us, remembering first of all to share love, for by love many a sin is forgiven and many a relationship is saved. Amen. The last hymn this morning is number, pardon that, 399, Take My Life in your hymnal. I invite you to rise and body your spirit and sing. So as we go today, um, it's going to be a little different than usual. One, you should take the extra juice because it should go to a good home instead of sitting here forever. Uh, but because it's All Saints, um, I will not be recessing. I will be here if anybody needs to talk or pray or maybe remember someone and want someone to listen. I will be up here until I'm no longer needed up here. Uh, so please save me a cup of coffee. But in the meantime, uh, please go in peace, knowing that being faithful is not a matter of a race or a sprint. It's a marathon. If you've made mistakes, dust them off and live in forgiveness. If you need help, ask someone for help. If you've hit rock bottom and you need a hand, that's what the community of the church is for. So let us be your family. Go in peace today, wherever you may be, and know that God loves you deeply, that you have the ability to live a faithful life. So go in peace, my friends, and may the peace of God be with you both now and always. Amen. Amen.